Where do you even see the word Trinity in the Bible? That is a man-made word because it's a man-made false doctrine. If you look at the Bible and you read it from the front and you read it to the back and you look at the middle, all right, you will not see the word Trinity anywhere in the Bible. What is up all my truth seekers? This is Pastor Jacob with another biblical first responder video and this is Witness Wednesday. So you know what I need you to do? All of those wonderful things that helps this channel grow. I appreciate that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what it is or maybe it's just becoming more prevalent, but why does it seem like there is such a hate for the doctrine of the Trinity? Now, anybody that knows me knows the doctrine of the Trinity is something I'm staunch about. I'm a staunch advocate of the doctrine of the Trinity, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not God, but I personally believe that if you do not believe that God is a Trinity, because the Bible so clearly states it, that you are not saved. That's my conviction. Now, why is it that it seems that the doctrine of the Trinity is under attack these days? Why does it seem that many preachers, many supposedly godly figures are dismissing the doctrine of the Trinity and either going soft Unitarianism or modalist? Why is that? What is so hard to understand about the doctrine of the Trinity? Where do you even see the word Trinity in the Bible? That is a man-made word because it's a man-made false doctrine. If you look at the Bible and you read it from the front and you read it to the back and you look at the middle, all right, you will not see the word Trinity anywhere in the Bible. Would you say it's one God manifesting himself in three ways or one God in three persons? I don't, I'm not crazy about the word persons. And this is, most people who know me know that that is really, my doctrinal statement is no different from yours except for the, the, the injection of manifestation. Manifest, inst manifest instead of persons, which you describe as modalist and I describe as Pauline. And God used Bishop T. Jakes to speak in my life and I'd be wanting to quit and his words would give me life. And the reality is, if it wasn't for T.D. Jakes, I would not be here today. Now, again, I'm not saying I'm no expert in the doctrine of the Trinity. I'm not saying I'm uh, uh, the know-it-all of the doctrine of the Trinity by no means. What I am saying is things that are clearly taught in the Bible, why is it that hard for us to grasp hold of? One of those reasons comes from scripture. Jesus said that those who are not spiritual will not understand the things of the spirit. Those who are of the flesh, who have not been born again, will not understand the things of the spirit. So there are certain things that the Bible teaches that people who do not have God's spirit will not understand, period. And so I guess we have to chalk it up to that. There are people who profess to have a form of godliness or have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof that, that, that Jesus was a good man. Muslims say that. Uh, most religions will tell you that Jesus was a good man. That's correct. That is true. He was a good man. Many religions will tell you that Jesus was a prophet. That is also true. Jesus was a prophet. But there is only one religion that will tell you that Jesus was God in the flesh from the beginning of eternity. That Jesus was God. But there is only one religion that will say plainly, flat out, that Jesus was God in the beginning. He was with God. So then that denotes the fact that they are not the same person, but yet they are of the same essence, that Jesus Christ is God. And then when you get to John chapter one, verse 14, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So then Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus was God with skin on him. Why do we think that we can be saved. Why do we think that we can abide in Christ and Christ cover us and shadow us with his precious blood that he shed on the cross, 
on the hill of Golgotha. Why do we think that we're privy to his blood? Privy to the benefits of his blood being shed on our behalf, but yet we're going to deny him who he is. It's not going to work. If you do not believe that Jesus is God, you are not saved. If you believe that Jesus only came into being when he was born by the virgin birth, if you don't believe that Jesus existed in all of eternity past before being born by virgin birth, you do not believe the Jesus Christ of scripture. You are not saved. Now, what I am not saying, what I do give grace for is that there are many people in many churches who do not have the best teaching. They may have a pastor who is doing the best he can and doesn't have the greatest understanding of the biblical doctrine, but yet he has been graced by God to lead the people that he has from one point to the next, from faith to faith, as he grows. So I'm not talking about those people who eventually will come to the full knowledge of God by his grace. But until then, and for the people who are in these churches where they are being taught by pastors who deny, flat out deny the doctrine of the Trinity and do not uh, uh, give to Jesus Christ his due. We're not giving Jesus Christ, we ain't doing him a favor by saying that he is God. We are giving him his due because he is God. Scripture says so. Plainly and clearly. We can't take anything away from Christ, but still have Christ as our savior. You can't just take the Christ that you want. You have to take the Christ that comes with scripture. And when you do not do that, you cause yourself to be self-deceived because the Bible isn't deceiving you. It says it plain and clear. The preacher like me, who's telling you that, that, that God is a Trinity. He's triune, father, son, and Holy Spirit. One being three persons, you don't want to hear it? That's okay, but that means you are forfeiting your salvation. Not because Jacob said so, but because the Bible tells you to take Christ at his word. And he said, I and my father are one. When you say Jesus Christ is not God, you're saying he's not one with his father. You're saying that he didn't share in his glory because God says he would not share his glory with no man. So then if Jesus was not God, he could not share his glory with him. So what do y'all think about this situation? And I'm just going to let you know, if you come on this video and you post about the Trinity not being true, I'm going to delete your post. I'm just going to be honest with you. We do not do Trinity denial on this channel. So I, I could care less about how many comments I get. But if you don't believe in the Trinity, you might as well just keep on passing or block me or whatever you want to do. But we're not going, the Trinity is what we preach in this church, in this ministry. This is what we preach. So y'all drop your comments, like this video, share with your friends, subscribe to this channel. I appreciate you. God bless you.